So Ravens head coach John Harbaugh was on the Rich Eisen show a few days ago, and he had this to say, which I really appreciated. And even though it's something so simple, I thought it was effective in his delivery. All right, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm digging at. Um, then, um, so uh, you, you, Lamar's your long-term quarterback, though, right? I mean, so yes. Okay. Immediate answer. Of course, you think, oh, quarterback. I, we, I can guarantee you, there's going to be a big Twitter uh, storm when I say this. Yes, sir. We are not going to draft a quarterback. <laughs> so he let it be known that the Ravens are not going to draft the quarterback. And like I said, that that is something that a lot of us already figured, but there was still some people that's pushing against the grain and saying, oh, the Ravens should do it. They should do it for just in case Lamar Jackson doesn't sign, just in case something goes south with all the contract negotiations, just in case everything doesn't end up working itself out. Uh, but Harbaugh let it be known he was very straightforward. And of course, um, anything is possible till it ain't possible no more. But again, with the whole, if they were to draft the quarterback, it would be such a waste, such a waste of a draft pick. Um, and that's whether you use all 10 draft picks, whether you trade back and get even more picks, whether you trade up. And get more higher quality picks. Whatever the Ravens choose to do, them drafting a quarterback would be a waste. Uh, you have Lamar Jackson, obviously. You have Tyler Huntley, obviously. You're probably going to end up getting Kenji Bahar back during the offseason at some point. But using a draft pick at the quarterback position, it would be senseless. But my favorite part of this interview, my favorite part. Was this that Rich Eisen said because I appreciated the accountability, I appreciated the honesty, and I appreciated where he was coming from. Even though this is something that we knew already, I loved it. And I even said that on the air here. It's just like, you know, because he did tweet about it like, hey, you know, uh, I'm a raven and I don't know where it's coming from. And I'm like, hey, it's it's not a you problem. It's a, it's a me problem. It's a media problem. We, don't, we can't compute it. We, you know, this is I've never heard of a quarterback who could have what appears to be nine figures in front of him saying, I'll, I'll get around to it. <laughs> so he, he let it be known that all the, 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 the media is, is driving the media crazy because they've never seen a situation like this before with a quarterback who's in this position getting ready to get paid a whole lot of money. But he don't want to talk about the contract. He don't want to deal with the contract. <clears throat> Excuse me, Harbaugh said in that interview that the last formal conversation between him and Lamar Jackson and Eric DaCosta it was at the end of the season and he said Lamar let them know where he was at what he wanted to do what he wanted to work on where he wanted to be and where he wants to go uh, as far as himself as a quarterback and, and the, the level that he's trying to take it to so everything that Harbaugh said in the interview has been everything that they've been saying but Harbaugh put a, a better spin on it this time and he put really like put his foot down like hey no we're not drafting the quarterback Lamar is our guy and that's something that we all felt. Um, but Harbaugh also talked about how they want to really build around Lamar. They want to put more pieces around Lamar. And it sounds like Harbaugh is talking about making Lamar Jobs Jackson easier. Anyway, let's get into this episode of questions from subscribers. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs where you can ask any question you want to and we answer it in a video just like this. You want to be part of it? For the patrons, for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, you can send your question directly on Patreon. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, go to patreon.com slash engravenvids and if you don't want to, that's cool too, ain't got no problems. And for anybody who's not a patron, you can send your question at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. And we'll try to answer in the video just like this. We got some fire like we always do because y'all always bring it. Love y'all. Let's get into it. First question came from my boy D3. He said, y'all selling DC. What's good? Engraving a shout out to Team Keep It Clean. I hope that all is well. I got a two-layer question for you. Uh-oh. Uh, with the recent scandal with the owner of the Washington Commanders, do you, I, f I forget that that's their name sometimes. Do you think that the Ravens and EDC should inquire about Scary Terry uh, or Chase Young, who was coming off a season-ending injury from early last year? It could hurt. <laughs> Neither one of them two could hurt. 
I don't think the uh, the Washington, the Commanders, I almost called them the football team, I almost called them their previous name. I'm just so used to the old stuff. But I don't think the Commanders will come off of them. Uh, I know that uh, I'm, I'm just waiting on that announcement where they say, all right, Dan Snyder's going to sell the team. I'm just, I'm, it just seems like it's going to come every day now, but it's been seeming like it's going to happen any day now for like the past two years, and it still hasn't happened. So who knows? But yes, either one of those two certainly wouldn't hurt. And he said that organization is a dumpster fire and some players might not want to be affiliated with them anymore. Their owner, Dan Snyder, could possibly lose the team. With that being said, what draft capital and possible Ravens players are you willing to part with to acquire either one of these game changing players? I give up a second and two fourths this year for either one of them. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> he said I might even throw in Ferguson and Tyson Williams. Hopefully they can thrive in a different scheme. Uh, as far as Tyson Williams, I don't think it's the scheme that's the issue. Um, but anyway, we could talk about that uh, uh, another time. Because Tyson Williams, we know he could play. He could do his thing. But anyway, um, I if if we could get either one of those two for that, I, I would throw that over there. A second and two fours? This year. Take it for Chase Young or Terry. That's so easy, man. That is so easy. I thought you were going to say a first this year, a first next year, second and a third. I thought you were going to come with something wild, but you a second and two, four, that is cheap. For one of those two? Oh, yeah, sign me up. Phil replaces EDC. Next question came from my guy Phil Mon. He said, hey, Raven, hope all is well. I'm looking at two routes the way that the Ravens can go about the rest of free agency as well as the draft. Number one, trade for DK this year's first and second next season. Uh, second round pick can be used on defense. Care Elam, Andrew Booth for cornerback or some defensive lineman. Uh, we use our other picks on offensive line edge and re-sign Justin Houston because the health and status of our linebackers are kind of unknown right now. With this, we have DK Bateman, Hollywood, and Mandrews as our receivers, and we can play Duvernay as our Debo, Percy Harvin. I remember your comparison from a few weeks back. Okay, appreciate you. Uh, with re-signing uh, Devontae Freeman for familiarity and health concerns. Our offense will have no excuses for Greg Roman, and it can be his make or break year for him with a really well balanced team. Or likely DK doesn't get traded or come to the Ravens if he does get traded, LOL. Uh, so you trade up to the Giants' second pick, their seventh, seventh overall in the first round. Uh, and with that first rounder, and either a third or fourth, you try to get Kayvon Thibodeau. Uh, with our second rounder and plenty of picks still available, we package our second and fifth and move up in the second round and get George Pickens. The guy we really need as a big body guy. We turn 10 picks into eight, but our first two are amazing value, and we still have six more. I like your thinking. Our picks will be best available, but go for cornerback, defensive lineman, offensive line, as long as they aren't a reach because we already got that too. Uh, now we need those role players that tackle well and give Lamar that extra second to pass. On draft night, we could trade Miles Boykin and maybe a six for a fourth and go from there. Uh, if that's possible, and we will continue to build up our picks, which is what the Ravens love to do so much. Uh, here, our offense would be Mandrews, Bateman, Hollywood, Pickens, and we still use Duvernay the same way. Uh, I'd rather have the second one because we have more flexibility and would only have to worry about paying Lamar and possibly Hollywood after we win the Super Bowl. <laughs> what are your thoughts? Which one would you prefer? Well, I mean, if you're saying the second one's going to get us a Super Bowl, okay, give me the second one. Uh, but really either one. But my preference would probably be that first one because that would be acquiring uh, DK Metcalf and just adding him to our offense. But I mean, either way, because uh, I, I don't I, I don't think the Ravens are going to trade for a DK Metcalf. I just I just don't see it happening. I would love it if it did, but I just I don't see it happening. Um, so based off of things that I think could possibly happen, now trading up to the seventh overall. Oof. From 14, that's seven spots, and that's in the first round. That's some high value right there, baby. And he said, uh, oof, with that first rounder and either third or fourth, trying to get Kayvon uh, Thibodeau. Oof. But you saying we turned 10 picks into eight, so we only gave up two picks to trade to, to get up to seventh overall? What picks are that? Unless you're talking about like a first from next year or something. That's the only way, but... Again, if, if the second one is going to give up, I think the second one is more realistic. Yes, except I just, I don't know what you're giving up to go to seventh overall. But however you get there, hey, cool, I'm cool with it. Uh, but just yes, because this, the second one, uh, as far as the draft, is definitely quality 
over quantity. Next question came from Jonathan. He said, what's going on in Graven Hope all as well? After carefully looking at all the Ravens moves and really putting into thought, uh, and what do you think about these moves and how would you feel if it were to happen? Here we go. Add two free agents to our team. Wide receiver and edge. Two names I suggest. Wide receiver, Jarvis Landry. Edge, Jadavian Clowney. Oh, I would love the Jadavian Clowney one. Jarvis Landry one I would be cool with. Um... Now, I would love the Jadavian Clowney one. He said, two former Browns players who are familiar with the AFC North and both possess the physicality to play like a Raven. Their strengths would definitely help. That's true. That's true. Um, so, I, yeah, I wouldn't be mad at either one of those two moves. All right, he said, after these moves successfully goes through. <laughs> I, I see what you did there. Successfully. And he put it in quotation marks. You got to take those quotation marks off, though. Because the quotation marks would make it like it, maybe it might not really truly be successful. So take the quotation marks off. Um, but he said, after these moves successfully go through, we go to the draft. With the 14th pick, Ravens should trade up and draft Derek Stingley Jr. Here's why. Yes, we have Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters on the roster, and both including Stingley coming off of season-ending injuries or season-ending surgery, which I feel all three will bounce back with something to prove this year. But let's look deeper. Ravens' upcoming wide receiver matchups, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, Anthony Miller, Mari Cooper, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Jakeem Grant, and, and maybe some more because... They still, or all these teams still got the draft, but the Browns, you know, they're they going to do something there. I don't think they're rolling with Cooper and Donovan Peoples-Jones and Jakeem Grant, that's it. But anyway, probably Will Fuller. Some, anyway, uh, Stephon Diggs, Gabe Davis. Oh, yeah, we do play the Bills this year. And it's at the bank. Forgot about that. Kyle Pitts, even though he's a tight end. Oh, yeah, we play the Falcons again this year because, yeah, we're going back to Lamar's rookie schedule. All them teams that uh, he played in his first year. Because, yeah, you play everybody every four years. Uh, DJ Moore, Bobby Anderson, Robbie Anderson, uh, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle. That's the I, I can't wait for that game. Jerry Judy, Cort Cortland Sutton, Devontae Parker, uh, Michael Thomas, Callaway, Traquan Smith, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Christian Kirk, Marvin Jones, A. Jones, Kenny Galladay, Sterling Shepard, Kadarius Tony. Dog. Oof. I am so glad that you put it like this because thank you for doing this. Thank you for showing that what Ravens got to go up against this season. Ugh. So you know you know they address in corner like early. And oh my goodness. Oof. He said now some of these players may be overlooked due to their name, but majority will have one-on-one -on -one matchups with our third best corner. Uh majority of these wide receivers are either true number ones, which command attention, solid number twos, which could win one-on-one -on -one matchups based on size and experience, and solid number threes, which could kill us with speed. So let's not forget, some of these teams have playmakers at tight ends as well. Uh, and I'm not, uh, excuse me, and I'm sure some of our opponents may draft to sign good quality pass catches as well. That's true. Last year, we got killed by wide receiver play. Some, uh, where, some were due to lack of depth or injury, busted coverage, or lack of playmaking on the ball. Plus, we were more of a heavy blitz team and still got killed on the back end. Oh, well, Ravens kind of changed that scenario, didn't they? Uh, with Stingley, we get more depth, new defense, and uh, coordinated. Oh, and coordinated new defense and coordination. I think he meant new defensive coordinator because he put new defense and court. So anyway, you, you got me looking crazy up here right now, but I'll take that L for you because I love you. So new defensive coordinator, simplified defense and playmaker on the ball. Uh, I believe with great coverage, our front seven will feast and we already have a wall up front. What do you think based on my perception? Should we go all in for Stingley? Sorry for the long one, but keep up the great work. Appreciate it. Stingley wouldn't be bad as long as he can stay healthy. Now, as far as far where you said, um, I believe with great coverage, our front seven will feast. Whew, uh, our cornerbacks will feast with a great front seven. Uh, we don't have that right now. Um, our front seven is uh, not great. They are all right. They're not great. They're they, they not pressure-based. They ain't like, you got to die fair away. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. But as far as pressure, that's it right now because Ty Tyus Bowser's out. Um, who gonna be opposite of him of Adafi away? So that's a big question, Mark. Again, we got the draft, got free agency and whatnot. Um, oh, I think didn't didn't you say? Oh, hold up, no, my fault. You said Jadavian Clowney. Oh, okay, okay, wait. now Jadavian Clowney Adafi. Ooh, I like that now. Now, if we can get somebody that could bring some interior pressure too, ooh, we be all set. I, but I, I I like your moves. You should be a GM. Next question came from my boy Joshua. He said, Debo Samuels or DK Metcalf? And Graven, keep up the great work, for real. I just type in Graven in the search bar to see what's going on these days. <laughs> Appreciate you. I would love to see DK Metcalf as Lamar's number one weapon, but my gut tells me that Giro is gone. Uh, Debo may be a better scheme fit for immediate production in this heavy run offense. DK is definitely the better 
bet for the long run, but until the offensive philosophy changes and catches up with the times, Debo may be a great and cheaper answer for one year. Yeah, I've seen that Debo is on the block, apparently, and I saw what the report said that the 49ers are listening to whatever for whoever. Um, I just feel like if, if they got Debo Samuel, I would just be worried because they he's a receiver, but he's a baller. He's just a great football player. But for that one, I know a lot of people would be scared if we were to get like a DK Metcalf. Um, a lot of people be scared about him and G-Row's system. But for me, I would be even more scared of a Debo Samuel in G-Row's system. Reason being because I feel like with Devin DuVernay, who is, he's on the field a lot, but he's not on the field as much as like maybe a Hollywood or he's not on the field as much as we anticipate a Bateman to be uh, in the future. He's not on the field as much as a Mandrews. So with, with Devin DuVernay, a lot of stuff, when things are going to him, it can be so obvious. And they don't use him like a wide receiver. They use Devin DuVernay as just sort of a weapon, sort of a gadget guy. If Debo came over here, I, I feel like that on paper, that should be an upgrade to our wide receivers. And it would be. But that was, like I said, that would scare me more than... Uh, then a lot of y'all are scared for DK Metcalf to come over here and him not be used the right way or something like that. I would fear that with Debo Samuel that they would like really try to milk it. And But when they tried to milk it, I feel like it would just be so obvious. I do not feel like the creativity would be there for Debo Samuel. I do not feel like they would get the best usage out of a Debo Samuel for everything that he can do. This is why I would much rather them go for more of a traditional wide receiver instead of a Debo Samuel, who he is a nice wide receiver, but he's just a straight up weapon. Now, he is a yak monster. He is a yak monster, and Raven's been lacking in the yak for a long time. So that he could help with big, but I would just be scared that they would just try to use him like just a running back. I feel like jet sweep, I feel like this is what they would do over and over. They would do these double reverse jet sweeps, whatever, where they would send somebody, like Duvernay would be on one side and Debo would be on the other. And Duvernay would come running the motion, they'd snap the ball, pitch it to Duvernay, and then Duvernay, he pitches to Debo Sammy. I just, and I feel like they would do that over and over. I would be so scared, man. This question came from my guy, Dominique. He said, what's up, you Raven and team? Keep it clean. I uh, hope everybody is doing well. I've been thinking a minute about these free agents and the Ravens. I think there are more factors than we think when a player is thinking about signing with a certain team. I think it comes down to coaches, culture, and where the team stands as far as if they are in win-now mode or not. Now, we also don't know what the player thinks of the team, coaches, and the players, or if they are just worried about the money or not. Or, or they just want to join a winning situation. Uh, now, I really believe that the Ravens do be trying to get these players. Like, they may not be as cheap as we think. It's just the little things that a player may not like. Uh, things such as the coordinators and how they think they may get used. So my question is, what is your perspective on this? And do you agree or disagree? Uh, sorry for the long question. Just something I've been thinking about the whole offseason. I, I think it all just, it depends. It's, it's no, like, one answer. And like you said, we, we don't know. But a lot can, like the Bobby Wagner thing, Ravens offered more guaranteed money. So Bobby Wagner was getting that 18 mil from the Ravens, but he chose to go for the 17.5 mil from the Rams and then with the incentives that he, so he got to hit different incentives to get that 23 something mil, I forgot how much it was, and then he get to be at home. So while the Ravens did technically offer kind of more money, more guaranteed money, uh, he chose to go back home and play for a team that just came off the Super Bowl, so they got a lot to do with it too. Um, but But... Different players can look at different stuff. Some players just they just want to get that bread. Some players want to try to get as much bread as possible and win. Um, everybody got their own situations. So there's no like one thing or anything like that. There's no one set scenario or anything like that where it's like, all right, well, um, this player left because of this. So this player and this. So it all just depends. Some people, like some offensive players, something that we brought up in another video, some offensive players may be like, oh, man, they ain't got Lamar signed long term. Ooh, how, how long is he going to be there? I want to play with him, but I can't sign a long term deal with them. They don't want to give me a, a one year deal. So I don't know, because if Lamar leaves, then I don't want to be there no more. So it, it could be something like that. It could be, oh, man, that's how they run that offense. Me, I, oh, I don't want to be a part of that. So you, you just never know. It could be so many uh, different things. But that is a really, really good question. Uh, he also said, 
Um, I've been thinking about different scenarios about the interest in Melvin Gordon and what it could mean. Me personally, I think a trade of Gus Edwards could be it. I think the Ravens are making impossible trade packages for DK Metcalf. I think the Ravens have about three packages to offer the Seahawks. Uh, and I think with the interest in Melvin Gordon is a sign. I know this may be pushing it, but the draft doesn't fall. Uh, if the draft doesn't fall the way the Ravens want it to, uh, we could see them step out of their comfort zone and make a move that we all been wanting them to come draft day. And that is to make Lamar's job easier. Ooh, that would be something right there. They traded Gus for DK and, of course, probably draft picks and whatever, too. Ooh, that would be something right there, man. Um, mm, uh, do they still have Chris Carson? I don't know. I thought he was a free agent this year. But either, either way, um, something that I was thinking about the past couple of days and I was thinking about Melvin Gordon. Um, I wonder if that could possibly be a move on Melvin Gordon's camp to try to sort of boost up the interest in him. Uh, or it could be a move on the Ravens camp to try to lower... Um, Lower uh, Devontae Freeman's asking price I don't know what it is I, mean, I'm not, I haven't heard anything about him But um, he's somebody that I definitely uh, saw the Ravens bring him back this year um, Not immediately in free agency But as at least in training camp uh, at Like JK with JK and Gus and Justice Hill all coming back I could see them bringing Devontae Freeman back To be like alright he, he can get more comfortable in the system He knows our system uh, pretty well Because he got better and better last year um, he could be our just in case guy. We could keep him in training camp. Yeah, we're probably gonna cut him, but we'll we we'll hit him up. Or you could put him on a practice squad. So I just I think that could possibly be it too. As far as a trade though, you you never know, man. You never know. I um I thought about that too myself that they could possibly trade somebody. Um, but I just, oof, I don't. That's tough, man. That's tough. I, I I just, I really don't know. Next question came from New Freed 8. He said, I've seen a lot of people describing Kyle Hamilton as a once in a generation prospect. He may be a great safety, but he is not a once in a lifetime guy. And even Jamal Adams may have been a better prospect. I wouldn't be thrilled if we took Hamilton and played him at safety and single high when we have guys like Brandon Stevens who can move to cornerback Chuck Clark and recently signed Marcus Williams. From what I've seen on film, I think Kyle Hamilton would be a great linebacker. He has the physical tools to be one, and he has the elite get off uh, to make plays against the run and the, and the pass. And this will be a great pick at 14 or 10 if we trade up. It will fix the current linebacker problem, as I think he could be a true Mike, and we will have one of the best linebacker cores for years to come. Oh, my. I have not heard this one before. Okay. Transitioning him from safety to linebacker. Wow. That will be something right there. And it's it's been done. We see, uh, I think it's Keanu Neal, who used to play for the Falcons, and then he played for the Cowboys, and now he just got signed. I want to say by the Bucks, but he made the transition. Uh, Jamal Adams, he'd be around the, the line of scrimmage. He'd be in a box a lot. Um, who else? I know there's more, too. Um, but, oof. And I know that, I remember last year, there was some Ravens fans saying, Patrick Queen, he should move to safety. So they, they wanted to flip around the other way. Um, but, ooh. Mm. Ravens, um, wow, you threw, you threw me all the way off. Uh, mm, I would say no. I, I, I would say no. Let, let, let him be a safety. Safety is what made him special. Um, let, let, let him stay there. Let him be what made him special. Um, don't try to come in and don't try to change somebody special. Don't, don't try to change what they've been doing so well and try to make them something different. Not to say he couldn't do it, but let his special be what his specialty is. Um, I was listening to 410 Sports Talk. Shout out to James and Glenn. Y'all know them. Um, and they brought up a really great option at 14, like a sneaky one. And he said, uh, he said Devin Lloyd. And I was like, oh, whoa. Now that's one I heard about him a little bit here. But at 14, getting the linebacker, I was like, oh, oh, that would be sneaky right there. Um, because the Ravens, they're not set on Patrick Queen, as we know. Um, they're not set on Josh Bynes. He was their backup plan. And when Bobby Wagner fell through, um, so if they were to get it, wow, that, that would be something right there. That would, that would be something. And that, uh, that, that would be a sneaky, uh, 14th overall pick. Um, but yeah, as far as Kyle Hamilton, the linebacker, I say no.
Next question came from my guy Diego. He said, "Hey, Graven, hope you and everyone in the fam is doing well. I'm gonna keep it short and sweet here. In your opinion, what is the most overrated player on the Ravens? What is the most underrated player on the Ravens? Anyway, hope you stay safe and keep up the fantastic work. And like Ronnie Stanley, hopefully, is not when it comes to his availability next season. I'm out. I like that one. Ooh, most overrated and underrated player on the Ravens. Mm. Um, wow. Overrated. Uh." I think all of their free agents that left. And the reason I say that, and, and that was by myself too, because boy, I was for sure Bradley Bozeman about to get this top of the market or not, even if not close to the top of the market, he's going to get, I mean, even if not top of the market, then close to the top of the market, money and free agency. I thought Anthony Avery was going to get a nice little deal in free agency. Tay-Tay, when he got cut, I'm like, all right, he's going he gonna to get something decent in free agency. All the Ravens, free agents that left, Eric Thomason and Josh Johnson, they don't count because they were more backups. But guys that started for the Ravens, they all got one-year deals. No long-term commitment from anybody on one-year deals. Tay-Tay got a one-year deal with the Bears. Anthony Avery got a one-year deal with the Raiders. And Bradley Bozeman got a one-year deal with the Panthers. So um, I just... Maybe I, I overrated them. Maybe I thought that I just thought the market was going to be different. I, I thought the demand was going to be different. Uh, I, I really thought things were going to be much different. Um, but as far as oof, most underrated player on the Ravens. Um, hmm. Underrated. Ooh, that's a really tough question. Underrated player on the Ravens. Mm. Wow. You like stumped me. That this really put me on the spot, man. Um is is Lamar is is that am I allowed to say Lamar Jackson? And the only reason I say that because um I feel like a lot of inside and outside people underrate uh his throwing ability. And that, uh, yeah, so I'm going to say Lamar Jackson um, because he's in, he's going into his fifth year. He's going into his fifth year uh, and his fourth year as a starting quarterback in the NFL. The Ravens have done a lot of winning in, in the regular season with him. Um, but his throwing still, a lot of people still question his, his arm. A lot of people still question if he can throw the ball. A lot of people still question if he's a legitimate quarterback. He's going into his fifth year. His fifth year. And people are still questioning that. So I say Lamar. Next question came from my guy Aaron. He said, Talofa Engraving. Uh, I haven't been on here in a minute, but before I get to my questions, I would like to salute you and how far you came. Uh, I remember when you did videos in your car. I hope you and your family are doing well. I, I appreciate that, Aaron. Thank you, man. Uh, my first question is, do you think Lamar hasn't signed yet because he is waiting to see if the Ravens truly value him? Yes, I think that's part of it. I think but just really he wants to bet on himself, too. But yes, I agree with that part, too. He said, if we look at all the different signings, uh, Tua got Tyreek Hill, the Rams solidified their wide receiver core by adding Allen Robinson. No disrespect at all to Hollywood or Bateman, but you have to have the tools to succeed and the cap is cap. I understand we are running team, but maybe we shouldn't have to run so much if we have solid quality receivers. Um, so yeah, I, I, I agree, um, that, uh, yeah, they, they could do another upgrade there. Ain't nothing wrong with having a lot. Again, the, a lot of Ravens fans think that, oh no, we got enough. We shouldn't add, no, add more, add more quality over quantity, baby. Uh, my next question is, do we grab a middle linebacker in a draft or do we try to sign like an Anthony Hitchens or a Hightower from the Patriots? Thanks for always doing questions from subscribers. Wish nothing but the best for you and your fam and all the team. Keep it clean. Appreciate that. Um, I think if you see a guy that you think is ready, like now, to come in and play now, um, <clears throat> I would say draft one. I would say draft one. And this could possibly be your guy of the future. And you could end up seeing how he works with Patrick Queen. Um, and I know we still got Malik Harrison, too. Uh, so there's a possibility that he ends up taking that role. But, again, they they don't believe in Patrick Queen like that. Their actions have shown that. What they've been doing has shown that. So 
this guy, if, if you draft somebody, you, you don't got to be first round either. But if you draft somebody, this could work for you in a couple ways. It could backfire. And, may, hey, may, worst case scenario, he doesn't work out. But the ways that it could work out, um, one, he could make Patrick Queen's job easier. Two, he could make Patrick Queen step it up a lot. Because Patrick Queen knows the business, man. He, he knows the business. He knows what time it is. If he sees that they draft a linebacker, especially inside linebacker, he's going to be like, oh, okay. Not that he needs any extra motivation. I'm sure he got all the motivation in the world already from himself. Because a lot of times these players, they are their own biggest critics. They know where they need to step up. They know where they need to improve. They know what they need to get better on. So I'm sure he don't need no extra motivation at all. And I mean, I, y'all done seen him on Twitter and stuff. It it he he has it seems like he has like a breaking point because so many people they get on there and they talk so bad about him. It's like man, okay, y'all relax, relax, please. Um, like he could put he could put something about like playing a video game or something. They're like, oh man, no, you need to be focused on the playbook. Like, let these people have their off time, man. Like, anyway, fans can be just annoying sometimes. Um, but if they were to draft a linebacker. Maybe, hey, he could be the answer to Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen could be the answer to him. They could be a nice little one-two punch. Um, so it could, it could work out. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I would say draft one.